Hi, I'm Rachel Jenkins, and we're back with community news today from Cape Fear Newspapers. In sports news, former North Carolina State University athlete Greg Moretti will be guest speaker when the adult chapter of the Fellowship of the Christian Athletes meets Thursday, April 14th at the Rose Hill Restaurant on Highway 17 in Rose Hill. This is the new FCA chapter's first meeting. Please join us for dinner and fellowship, said Wallace Rose Hill varsity football coach Joey Price. Moretti will give his testimony on how he came to know Christ, as well as give anecdotes on his career at NC State. FCA members say that God is working already through the FCA to help start a chapter in every school in Duplin and Sampson counties. We want everyone to feel connected as we help spread the gospel of Jesus Christ to our young people, Coach Price said. This is another opportunity to serve, so bring a guest and join us. The meal will be Dutch off the menu beginning at 6 p.m. with Moretti to start speaking at 7 p.m. A former NFL football player for the Miami Dolphins, Washington Redskins, and the Green Bay Packers spoke about his relationship with Christ during the first annual banquet of the new chapter held last month at the Rockfish Country Club. I had the opportunity to play in front of tens of thousands of fans, said retired football player Jim Kitts who lives in Wilmington and serves on the board of directors of the Fellowship of Christian Athletes in Southeast North Carolina. Kitts called his NFL career his 15 minutes of fame, but said he would trade it for his life and commitment to and for Christ. Prior to the keynote speech by Kitts, testimonies were given by coaches Jarrett Price and Joey Price and students Charnese Newkirk and Sherita Smith. They spoke on what the FCA has meant to them. Harrell's Christian Academy FCA members were guests at the banquet. If you have questions about the FCA, contact Coach Price at 910-625-7826. The home team Wallace Rose Hill Bulldogs won a close baseball game Friday night, prevailing 1-0 over James Keenan in a close pitching duel. Sophomore Alex Boyette was the winning pitcher, tossing a complete game one hitter and striking out 11 Tiger batters. The losing pitcher Tyler Haney didn't do so badly himself. He went the distance, surrendered just one hit, and struck out 13 batters. The Bulldogs relied on some timely finesse running to score the game's lone run. In the bottom of the sixth inning, TJ Murrell took first base on a walk with one out. Murrell stole second base and then reached third base on a passed ball. With two outs, both strikeouts by Haney, the Tiger pitcher threw a pitch that got away from the catcher, but not very far. Merle broke for home and slid under Haney's tag. Cheering broke out when the home plate umpire signaled safe. TJ made a great read on the ball, said Bulldog coach Cal Parker, and he was able to slide under the tag. Boyette had to pitch his way out of a jam in the top of the seventh inning to preserve his win. The Tigers put runners on second and third with no, with no one out. Pitching-wise, how did Boyette face the daunting task of getting the next three batters out and not giving up any runs? I stayed focused on throwing strikes and hoped the defense played well behind me, the sophomore ace said. The first out came on a failed bunt try with two strikes. Then he struck out the next two batters to win the game. Boyette said the 1-0 win over the Tigers is his best pitching effort yet. Coach Parker described the win as a must win. Only the first five of the eight teams in the Tri-County Conference made the state baseball tournament. The Bulldogs are now 4-4 in the Tri-County Conference and 5-9 overall. Our Tri-County Sports section appears in all of our papers, so no matter what you're reading, you'll have the latest on all the sports in our area. From the Wallace Enterprise, we have news of a potential arson case. Wallace police and fire officials continue to investigate a suspicious fire at the Glendale Apartments off East Carter Street. They claimed two and a half apartments, according to Detective Captain Trey Gideons. The fire started late Tuesday, April 5th, or early or Wednesday, April 6th. Wallace, Tichy, and Northeast Fire Departments battled the blaze in one of the wings at the Glendale Apartments. Firefighters fought the fire for about two hours, according to Gideons. We were able to put it out before it took out the whole complex, Gideons said. He said police are leaning toward it being a set fire. Investigators saw no evidence of any electrical malfunctions, Gideons said. We looked at heating and water units and saw nothing wrong with them, he said. Neighbor Tracy Stalker, a single mother with two children, was asleep when the fire was first noticed. She said a neighbor attempted to wake her but failed. Police officers did make enough of a racket to wake her and her children, she added. 
The fire started in an unoccupied apartment and spread to Stalker's nearest neighbor. The neighbor's apartment suffered severe damage and is not livable, Stalker believes. Stalker's suffered smoke damage and is not livable as well, she said. Stalker was going through her things on the morning after the fire, seeing what was salvageable. There are some unoccupied apartments elsewhere in the apartment complex, and Stalker is hopeful that the landlord will move her into one of those. Another residential structure fire, this one on March 21st at 138 Circle Drive, is also being classed as a set fire, Gideon said. However, he is not ready to link the two fires. The March 21st fire severely burned the northeast corner of the house and caused smoke damage. The residents were away from the house at the time of the fire, which started around noon, Gideon said. The fire originated on the outside of the house's northeast corner. That information, as well as tips from the public, lead police to believe the fire was arson. Gideon said police do have a suspect in the March 21st fire, but are not ready to make an arrest. We're trying to get more pieces to the puzzle, he said. In other fire news, the Warsaw Volunteer Fire Department, aided by Keenansville and Magnolia Volunteer Fire Departments, responded to a structure fire at 707 Claude Scott Road in Warsaw last week. Upon arrival at the scene, firefighters found a storage structure fully engulfed in flames. They prevented the fire from spreading to two nearby homes as they quickly battled the blaze and brought the fire under control. The structure and its contents were a total loss. Fire personnel were on the scene for two hours. That's it for today's items from the Wallace Enterprise and Warsaw Face and News. Please tune in to Topics Design TV tomorrow and every weekday at 2 p.m. for more news from Cape Fear newspapers. In the meantime, keep up with us by reading our papers, The Advertiser News, The Pinder Chronicle, The Wallace Enterprise, and The Warsaw Face and News. Thank you so much for joining us today, and we'll see you right here tomorrow.